Hey guys, I have chicken box as an adult and if you're wondering why I'm green all over and look like a crazy person, I will address this later in the video. If you already have chicken box as an adult, if you have some symptoms that seem to be chicken pox in your adult and if you've interacted with somebody who had chicken pox and you might think that you might have it I'll be telling you day by day my uh, symptoms what happened my medications and I'll be including a couple of uh, photos with my chicken pox I can tell you up front that this is um, not not the nicest photos that you've seen let's be honest but I think it's important because it can also be a very scary disease when I had it I was checking the internet to see if other people have the same you know chicken box that, that i had the same inflammation that i have so i think it's um, pretty important a lot of people have reached out to me and they told me their own stories of contracting chicken box as an adult and uh, their uh, records of this disease range from oh my god it was so horrible i felt so bad to i thought i'm gonna die i thought i'm not gonna surpass this disease uh, my own experience fell somewhere in the middle. There were days when I felt like I was having a flu and there were days when my skin was itching so hard that I thought I'm just gonna scratch the skin off my face. I can vouch that this is a horrible disease to have as an adult. So if you're over 20 years old and you didn't have chicken pox, I urge you to get the vaccine. It's been on the market for 30 years, it is safe, it is widespread, you get one dose, wait for a month, get another dose and boom, you have immunity. Nothing like this is going to happen to you. And if it doesn't sound very convincing at this moment, please watch the entire video to hear about my experience. So uh, day one, I woke up with a uh, general body ache, my muscles were aching, I had a headache, um, and my first thought was that I have the flu. I measured my fever a couple of times and I think it was like very low or maybe like 37.1 degrees Celsius. Um, so I thought, yep, you know, probably just some sort of new flu. Last time I measured my fever was like 37 around midnight and then I was watching, um, you know, some movies and all of, you know, like at some point I felt like I was way too hot and I'm like this is super strange let me measure my fever once again that was like 1 a.m. Uh, and when I measured it it was 39.1 degrees Celsius this is extremely high fever I had such high fever maybe a couple of times in my life so obviously I just panicked I uh, searched for other thermometers around the house you know I measured my fever I think five or six times to be sure that I have such a high fever and I immediately took um, um, some, you know, medicine for, for the fever because I was like super scared. I was actually panicking at this moment because it r increased really fast. And I didn't wait for the effect of the medicine to kick in. I actually went into the shower, took a cool shower to be able to help my body cool down. In about like 30 or 40 minutes, I measured my fever once again. It was like 2 a.m. and my fever started dropping and I'm like, whew. Okay, that was that was weird, but you know, maybe this is some sort of special flu. So I went back to sleep um, and throughout the night I was like sweating profusely. Fast forward to day two, that was a Thursday. Uh, I also took a sick leave because I was like not feeling really well after the high fever during the night. Uh, but when I woke up and I went to the bathroom, I remember that I had some pimples, which like, now I know that they were pox, uh, but back then they just looked like regular pimples. And their location was near, you know, near the nose here on the forehead. And then I had some on my chest. They were like five or seven pimples, not painful at all. Just like red before you get the big pimple. I'm like, hmm, this is really strange. But given the fact that I did sweat a lot the night before and I had the fever, I'm like, probably this is some sort of reaction of my body to the fever. So throughout the day, I actually, I don't think I had any fever at all. Last time I measured my fever around 10 p.m. and it was 36.6. So at that point I thought, you know, that was that. I went to sleep, actually had a really good sleep that night um, and I was ready to go back to work. Day number three was Friday. That was the first day when I actually understood that something is wrong, this is not a flu. I went to the bathroom in the morning and I started seeing that the pimples that I thought 
I had on my face. They were starting to fill up with liquid. They were becoming pustules and they became more inflamed, redder, and the skin on them was super oily. So I googled the symptoms and um, the, the top hit was monkeypox. <laughs> Thankfully, I didn't have monkeypox because one of the symptoms that monkeypox has is inflamed lymph nodes, really big lymph nodes here and in the armpit. And I didn't have those. But at the end of the article, they said like it's very similar to the symptoms of chicken pox and then it kind of clicked for me because I didn't have chicken pox as a, um, as a kid. Since I was contagious at this point, I couldn't go to another city, uh, to uh, the hospital to consult with my doctor. The doctor also doesn't do online consults. In a nutshell, it was a big mess. So my only salvation basically was Googling, finding out what my other adult friends who had chicken pox, how they treated the disease. Surprisingly, uh, the chicken pox treatment is very simple. Basically, you take antiviral medication uh, that helps you um, uh, fight with the virus. And the sooner you take it, the better for you because it will be more, more efficient. The second one is antihistamine, which is a medication that you take against scratching because every time when you break a pustule, uh, there is a risk of infection and there is a risk of scarring. So be very, very careful not to scratch anything on your body or face and be very careful that your bedding is very soft so that during the night when you, you you turn and toss you know you don't break anything if you have fever paracetamol there's also aspirin and ibuprofen but those medicine are not recommended for this disease so the only kind of drug against fever is paracetamol i had a fever uh, once around 5 p.m it was 38.2 which is considered moderate fever took a paracetamol pill and like drop and it was fine. And for the pimples, uh, I was using a levomycetine solution and also salicylic acid alcohol solution for drying them up, up until a point, but that's later in the story. And you drink plenty of water and you get rest. That's it. The night uh, from day three to day four, which is basically from Friday to Saturday, was the worst night of the whole lot because my skin started scratching very hard. Uh, there is a limit to how much antihistamine you can take per day. It's like morphine, like you can take more because it's dangerous for your body. So basically I took a pill and I had to take an, the next pill like in a couple of hours in, in the morning. Uh, but uh, during the night, uh, I only slept three hours from two a.m. till 5 a.m. because my skin was scratching so much. There was no comfortable position that I could lay in. I slept like this and then like this and then like this. It was it was just horrible and during the three hours I would wake up regularly because the skin was scratching so much. From 5 a.m. this is already day four Saturday um, till like 7 or 8 a.m. I was just like going back and forth through the apartment and scratching my head because my, my scalp at that point didn't have any uh, box. Um, so I was like scratching my head like this and going through the apartment and like I couldn't focus on anything. I just wanted to stop. Like it was, it was that bad. I still had some hours to go before I could take my antihistamine pill and what I did, I actually took it way before I was supposed to, but the, like the itching is gonna drive you crazy. On Saturday, I again had like fever, um, I think also around 5 p.m. It was around 38, I took a paracetamol pill. Like the fever was not a concern so far. There is a very distinct treatment in how people in Eastern Europe treat chicken box and like in the West. So in the West, you can take showers, you can take baths to relieve the itching. In Eastern Europe, uh, doctors actually don't recommend taking showers and don't recommend taking baths, preventing the risk of breaking the pimples when you either shower or you towel your body dry. I don't know if one of the approaches is better, but I could say like during the first couple of days, I was taking showers specifically because I was applying some sort of um, lotion, PoxyClean, it's a mousse on my skin. Uh, it's recommended, it's like a modern medicine, it's recommended to kids, but for me it didn't work because it dried up very um, sticky. And this only contributed to the fact that I was not feeling clean, I was feeling itchy, besides the fact that my skin was itching. So um, I ditched PoxyClean after like two or three days of using it. Sunday, it was also a horrible day. So if I look at the fever chart, at 1 a.m. I had 38.6, which is moderate to high fever. Um, and then um, five in the morning, I had 37. 
and then 10 in the morning I already had 38 again so basically I was taking a paracetamol pill I was bumping it a little bit down and then like in one or two hours it would go back up like it was very persistent as with any medication there's a limit to how much paracetamol you can take per day and I was reaching mine and I'm like if I take the fourth pill because you can take four pills per day uh, how am I gonna you know decrease my fever from this point on called my parents talk to them and they're like well maybe you should call some sort of doctor and the only doctor that would visit me because again I'm contagious is an emergency doctor so I called you know the emergency doctors um, and they tested me for COVID again uh, the test came negative uh, the doctor was actually super nice he asked me about my symptoms I showed him like the fever chart he took a look at my medication and he's like you're doing everything correct you know antihistamine antiviral medication paracetamol when you have high fever and drink as much water as possible he actually said that when you have the box um, your body feels like it's been poisoned so the more liquid you drink the more you help your body take all this infection all this virus outside of your body and also drinking plenty of water helps you with uh, decreasing the fever for urine so you might have paid attention when you have high fever and go to the toilet to pee the urine is pretty hot this is one of the mechanisms that the body uses to cool down on Monday, uh, the fever actually dropped a bit. Uh, it dropped to 37. So this was my like fifth day with fever. Um, and if you have prolonged fever as an adult, it is recommended to see like talk to a doctor and see if you have any complications. So on Monday, I spoke to the doctor again. She listened to my symptoms and she's like, you know what, uh, your fever takes a bit longer than I expected. Uh, can you come tomorrow and do a scan of your lungs so uh, we are sure that your lungs are clean? So one of the complications that apparently you can get as an adult from chickenpox, which is pretty inoffensive to children, is uh, pneumonia, is encephalitis, and it's meningitis. The symptoms for those are nausea, uh, vomiting, very persistent headache, a uh, very persistent fever where you can't bump it down so you take medicine against the fever and actually like doesn't react to the medicine at all i agreed to go to the hospital on tuesday i was still uh contagious but i really didn't want to you know live it uh, like that i wanted to check if i have you know some complications in the evening i actually had uh, some pain in my chest i think it was after the discussion i started imagining that i have pneumonia but I I swear I had like pressure uh, in my in my lungs that I was feeling when I was moving and I'm like oh my god for sure I have pneumonia it is bad on Tuesday I went to the hospital I actually spent there half a day like doing all different procedures and I felt really bad because I was contagious still contagious at that point the point when you become non-contagious is when all of your blisters they are covered with a crust so that's the point when you're you know no longer a hazard to other people so I did the scan the scan actually luckily came out clean um, and with the scan of my lungs I went to the family doctor which is the general therapist and she actually prescribed antibiotics uh, which was pretty surprising antibiotics are not efficient at all in fighting viral infections they're pretty much useless and also my lungs were clean so it's not like something was happening there so I went to the infectionist um, and uh, he looked at me and he's like how are you drying your um, your cysts he was a really old guy and he's like no you should use this one this is um as we call it zelenka i will try to put it on the screen so you you see it it's a very popular um treatment for the skin for wounds uh, here but it leaves this amazing green tint as you can see so he's like no 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 we actually like your your pimples your pox are pretty big so we have to dry the blisters for something more efficient. Don't take any antibiotics because they are useless. Just, you know, vitamin C and antihistamine and you'll be fine. And take plenty of rest and drink as much water as you can humanly do during the day. Like drink the water all of the time because that is the one sure thing that you can do to help your body. 
there are not a lot of medication that are going to be mm, helpful for you uh, so i came back home i basically wasted half a day and i was super tired one thing with chicken pox is that you can get super tired with the most trivial of things like sometimes even like laying on the bed is tiring for you wednesday thursday and friday were actually nothing special i would still get occasionally a pimple or two but they were smaller in size not as inflamed my skin wouldn't scratch at all but i continued to drink antihistamine wednesday i actually took my last antiviral medicine and was like the, the, the seventh day of the disease um, and i didn't touch it from that point onwards. I'd still have some light fever and from what I understood the fever spikes are associated with a new rash. So there's a group of blisters appearing on your skin and you have fever as a result of that. It was actually very easy to track after I started using Zelenka, this green stuff, if I had any new eruptions because you know it's pretty easy to spot if you have something green on your skin or something red. Saturday and Sunday were basically days when I was recuperating. Um, on Sunday, um, I think all of my pimples, they were already covered in, in crust. So I was applying, in terms of frequency of applying, when the disease was super active, I was applying a drying solution um, maybe three or four times per day. And now towards the end, I was basically, you know, touching it up maybe once or maximum twice per day, usually in the morning and in the evening. Uh, I was covering only the pimples that didn't have the crust yet, so it would form uh, much faster. It's still hard to say if I'll have any scarring or not. Uh, today is day number 13, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, some of the uh, crusts started falling off. The pimple appears, it grows, you dry it up, the crust forms, then the crust falls, and you have to dry it up once again, a smaller crust forms, and then it falls for the second time, and basically the healing process for um, each of your um, pimples is completed. In retrospect, I have to say that um, <laughs> If medieval torture could be a disease, it for sure would be chicken pox. It is just such a torturous, terrible, horrible disease. There is no miracle medication that is gonna make it pass faster. And as an adult, you're guaranteed to have something that will last for two weeks and you'll suffer a lot. So again, I urge you to get um, a vaccine if you haven't had chicken pox as a child, because it will save you so much drama. Like it will make your life so much easier. If you have any questions, please feel free to write them down in the comments and I will be able to, um, as per my knowledge, give you the best answer that I have. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.